Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent. I'd like to show you how to do stream stream joins in KSQL. This is a brand new feature as of Confluent Platform 5.0. Recall that a stream is an abstraction over a Kafka topic. It's a never-ending sequence of events in contrast to a table, which is more like a collection of key value pairs where you always want to see the most recent value for a given key. Now, KSQL supports joining streams to tables, which for most people is pretty intuitive, but here we're joining a stream to another stream, which is a little weird the first time you think about it. Specifically, in this example, we're joining orders to shipments. Both of those things are pure event streams, things happening in time. And this join is going to let us figure out things like when an order ships, what warehouse did it ship from, and even more than that, how long does it take on average for an order to ship at all. And of course, all of this will let us drive alerting on whether it ever takes too long for orders to ship. Let's take a look at the raw Kafka topic with the order data in it. You can see the row key, the order ID itself, the customer name, the order amount, and as always, there's a timestamp. Timestamp is critical for stream stream joins because we will always need to specify a window, that is, a time window, when joining two streams. That might seem like an unfortunate limitation at first, but if you think about it, it's really necessary. Streams are unbounded sequences of events, so joining two streams without a window would take an unbounded amount of memory to accomplish in a performant way. And it goes without saying that memory is, just like your appetite for new Joey Montana songs, bounded. So we need to specify a window, which means that the timestamp matters. The topic has a field called order TS, which means that the time is explicitly modeled in the domain. We're not just relying on the broker wall clock to get the timestamp. If you look closely, you'll see that the order TS times don't match the road time field of this topic. This will become important in a moment. Let's register this topic as a stream using the create stream statement. It's JSON data, so we have to specify all the metadata. But more to the point, we're telling KSQL which column to use as the timestamp. We want this to be the order TS field, not just the timestamp of the message as it was originally produced. Now, all these timestamps are in epic format, which is probably the most sane way to store them in your actual streams, but they are a bit of a bummer to look at. KSQL gives us a function called timestamp to string that will render these with the formatting we specify. Let's compare the row time and the domain modeled order TS time in these events. You can see that they're always the same, which is what we expected since that's what we just specified when creating the stream. Remember, we're going through all this fuss about timestamps because they are a matter of primary importance in stream stream joins. But let's get on to that second stream. Here's the raw Kafka topic with the shipment data. We've got order ID, fortunately, a shipment ID, the warehouse it came from, and of course we have a timestamp at which the shipment occurred. If you look at those big long epic numbers, you can see that the shipment time and the Kafka row time are again, not the same. This is typical when you've got a domain modeled time. There's no reason to believe that the time at which your system formally recognizes an event is the same as the wall clock time on the broker to which that message is produced. So let's create a stream around this topic. We've got all our metadata, and again, we specify a timestamp just like we did with orders. We can take another quick look at the nicely rendered times in the stream we've just created, and we see that they match in this new stream. All good so far. Now we can start joining the streams. Let's walk through the parts of this KSQL query. We're projecting the order ID, a nicely formatted timestamp, the order amount, the customer name, and now some information about the shipment as well. We're joining new orders to shipments, easy enough, and here we get around to defining the window. We want to compare all orders to all shipments within four hours of each other. If there are shipments and orders outside of that four hour window, then they won't show up in the join results. And of course, at the bottom, we have here the join condition, which is order ID, and that makes enough sense. Thinking about that four hour window again, uh, that means that if a shipment ships more than four hours after an order, we will not see the results in this join. So orders and shipments don't just have to match by ID, which of course they do, just like any other join, they also have to happen nearby each other in time, where nearby is defined in this case by our window. 
It looks like orders one, two, and three have all shipped. We can see the order time, the order amount, and the customer name, and the shipment time, and the warehouse it came from. Notice that in our fictional business, these warehouses seem to be really on top of things. Uh, those timestamps appear to be really close together. We can see just how close together by performing another join to calculate the difference. Here we have the difference between order time and shipment time, converted from milliseconds to minutes, with the rest of the join set up just the same as the last one. Same join condition, same four hour window. And it looks like Nashville did great with the first order, they kind of took their sweet old time with the second, and Palo Alto did pretty well with theirs. If you're wondering why we don't see order four in any of these results, that's because it hasn't even shipped yet. This is an interesting analysis, so let's turn it into a persistent query. All we have to do is put create stream as at the beginning of the select with a name for the persistent query. Every new event that arrives on the order stream with a corresponding shipment inside the time window will result in an event being created in this stream. And it'll be persisted to a Kafka topic called fulfillment SLA metrics. We can even print out the contents of that topic right away. Let's say this business has an SLA that says orders will always ship within an hour. We can now very easily create an alert for this using the stream we've just created. We'll just select for any orders with a shipment time of greater than an hour. That seems like a really important query, so let's make that a persistent one as well. So now we've got a permanently established stream containing orders which violate our shipment SLA. Querying that stream, we can see that we have only one shipment that breaks the rules, that troublesome order out of Nashville. And remember order number four? Uh, what about that? Well, let's get it shipped to find out. To do that, we have to create a new shipment event. I want to keep our select on fulfillment SLA breaches running up top, so let me fire up a new KSQL CLI and take a look at just raw shipments. This is shipments with the shipment timestamp nicely formatted. Off the screen, I'm going to produce that new shipment event. Now, imagine this is happening automatically by our backend system that records the box moving to the dock or something. And now two things happen. In the bottom pane, you see the raw shipment itself. It ships from Barnsley. And up top, you see a new event there as well, because this shipment took just over three hours to get done, which breaks our SLA of an hour. And I don't know if you noticed, but all that happened in real time because this is stream processing. And without stream stream joins, this would be pretty difficult to do. As you can see with these joins, it's downright simple. Check it out for yourself and go to confluent.io slash ksql for more.